Hello and welcome to episode 137 of the Parapod. We're back again. It's your hosts, Mark and Owen, and it's another episode. Another episode of this podcast. <laughs> it's me dealing with my hay fever. Hay fever? Do you, do you have a bad deal? Oh, man. You a hay fever Fucking guy? Fucking booting me around. I Normally not, but like it has been booting me around. What is that like? Sniffling and sneezing everywhere. Like, I'm fucking like... She's like, it's one, it's one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I, I've been sneezing a bit the past few days. I don't think I have hay fever, though. No. I've never felt it. Never Normally, gets, get, get, get in the eyes sometimes. The eyes. I'm asthmatic as well, so probably, like, you know, hand in hand. Just yeah, yeah. Breathing problems. <laughs> yeah, very possible. I don't know. I, I just, I've, I've never understood it myself. Mm. Do you have to take the hand antihistamines and all that? Oh, man, I'm mad for them. Yeah. Anytime, like, Melissa's like, oh, I feel kind of sick, I'm like, take an antihistamine. <laughs> <laughs> sore foot antihistamine <laughs> Anti- it does work oh uh, fuck it, it they do work, work. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what's in them but they work whatever not histamines anyway not, yeah <laughs> definitely not histamines what is a histamine uh, inflammatory, inflammatory agent isn't it something like that makes you swell up so an antihistamine stops the swelling up yeah it slows you down it swells you down it swells you it down it you out you know some of them can have powerful effects as well mm. you know they put you to sleep wake you up it depends <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. Or like straight well, away. <laughs> anyway, I don't know anything about medicine. This is uh, yeah. Let's not get into that area. That is one. That is one area of. That's the only area. That's the only area. That, that, yeah, that's expert. That in. is the only area where I don't have. It's, I'll keep my mouth shut. I haven't a clue. It's anything so else? <laughs> anything else? I'll have it's an opinion. Free game. But yeah. That one thing. Having a clue. No, I'll leave it to the to, to the pros. But yeah, th- this week we have a, our, our recommended film is Walker. Um, 1987 1987 by Alex Cox which is done by the same guy who did Repo Man and uh, he also did the script for Fear and Loathing as well he also did which I didn't else. know he did something else as well but I can't remember what it is though but he did something else yeah yeah so yes yeah, so Walker's like the it's a nearly like a biopic like a surrealist historical drama of like this real guy who went and invaded Nicaragua in the 1800s um, classic yeah. American yeah, classic American job, and your man, and a classic kind of Paropod recommended episode, recommended film for the episode, um, type deal as well. Where after this movie, he was blacklisted and hasn't made a, a major movie since. And it was a film that was like more or less hated at the time. Hated at the time, yeah. And then reappraised and then, afterwards. Now, yeah, <laughs> classic. <laughs> and now it, it, it's it's reappraisal and uh, you know retroactive canonization is sealed now that it's a featured movie on the Paropod. Yep. It's now like part of part of the canon. I I'm nearly at the stage where I'm like I'm pretty sure that like most films that were con- like considered bad, they're actually probably bangers. They're probably bangers. Even right now. E- like no. What about the ones that we hate? No 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 not right now. Jeez, shit films never shit. <laughs> Halloween Kills is still a shit film. Yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that film is not gonna reappraisal, but. Well, maybe it will. Maybe people back like way in the future, like, oh man, they're talking about Trump, crazy. Yeah, it wasn't allowed <laughs> back then, man. That's why everyone hated it. But uh, <laughs> it was too woke. Um, but like, there's just like so many films are just like, oh, this is so bad, and then like you know, years later, it's like, oh, this film's actually like a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't go so far as saying Walker is a masterpiece. I wouldn't say it's a map, but same with like you know, like Repo Man. Remember we remember we watched Repo Man. I remember watching Repo Man. I can't remember anything about that movie. Yeah. I know I have seen it. It's a disaster. It's so confusing, surrealist, <laughs> aliens, um, just like fucking. There's a car. There's a car. I think a flying car. Your man Harry Dean Stanton's in it, or someone who looks like him anyway. Your man Douglas, his son is in it. You know, a chap. Me. Uh, What's our way? Uh, Emilio Estevez. Yes, is in it. Estevez. Yeah, Charlie Sheen's brother, or like half brother or something. He's in it. He's the main character. But like, it's a great movie. But it's a complete mess. It's really hard to follow. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I, I like the movie. I can't even really tell you what it's about. It's about aliens yeah. and a repo man. And uh, it's just something about radioactivity or like. Yeah, it's just far out there, and just yeah. has random monologues with, that go on. And it's like this is nothing to do with the movie, but it's really interesting. <laughs> and it's like. You know, it's it's Walker's kind of like that. It's a complete mess, but it, it's it's still interesting. Interesting to talk about. Very interesting director. Movie. Very interesting yeah. movie. So, but yeah, how you been? How'd I you have been? been good. Been good. I have like no real news. No real interesting news. No. No, not really. Cracked a TV or not a TV? I didn't crack. Let me let me rephrase that. Scratched 
a scratch. 200 euro monitor oh in, in work. work yeah how i was picking it up and i was bringing it over to show someone and they're like oh can you give it a wipe and say like, sure no worries and as i stepped to like get past the shelf the shelf like is metal snagged it and just i was like oh fuck wait just shattered the screen it didn't shatter the screen still works yeah it's not it's let me, let me make it clear it's not cracked Despite some of my fellow co-workers might say, <laughs> it is not cracked. That's a scratch. That's a scratch, <laughs> That's you a scratch. piece of shit. I turned, about, I turned it on. It still works. There's no crack. <laughs> it is scratched. <laughs> That's the, those are the words of a manager. Yep. Nothing, nothing happened there. Or a there. supervisor. At a least. supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wait, do you have to pay or anything? Or is, oh, is, no. Is the price gone down? No, no. It's no. More amazing. Just sell it again. Some, some rube who walks in. Don't worry about that. We're not going to turn off. it on. Send it off for repairs. That's it. Oh, you send off for repairs? Yeah, I don't, apparently. I don't know. So, like, there'd be, there's this thing called RMA. Yeah. R- repair Media Center or something like that. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and we send stuff off to them, and then maybe we get it back. Maybe. Maybe. Who are these people? I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. It's like, oh, send it to RMA. Don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know what they do. I, yeah. ju- I just know I they send it. They might send it back. They might send it back. <laughs> That's all I know. So it's like I've a fifty-fifty chance it gets repaired. I've opened up boxes and it's like, oh, this came from more MMA. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what? Like, what is it? It's like, oh, it's a switch. It's like, what was wrong with it? I don't know. What the fuck? Yeah, it's like Wayland Utani or something like that. It's just this, just this these, weird. These random people that just get stuff <laughs> and apparently fix it. And apparently don't. The, the machine elves. They kind of just decide. With, I think it's that they decide. Okay, we're already gonna repair this. We're gonna take it for parts. And it's up to us on what we do with it. And maybe maybe we'll send it back to that sh- shop. <laughs> or we'll send it off to a different one. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. You can't, can't ch- question our, our corporate o- overlords, Mm-mm. you know. Their, their, their supply chains, their logistics, just superior in every way to us. <laughs> it just makes sense. It just, whatever sense it makes, I'm not getting it, but it does. You know. It must. <laughs> <laughs> it do. It do. It do be. It really do. What about you, brother? Any any news? Any, any goss? Uh no, not really, not really. I was enjoying the bank holiday weekend. Had a great time. Mm-hmm. Lovely weather. Um, yeah, nothing really happened. I yeah. I never really have any news. I, I kind of noticed, you know, it's very it's, boring. Yeah, it's just that it's just it's just that passage in life at the moment where there's no news. There's nothing going on at the moment. Yeah, I think it's summer. It's I don't summer. Know. It's surely summer is the, the reverse. Something should be happening. I feel like people are just like taking a chill when it comes to summer. Like, mm. yeah, take yeah. a step back. Put the put the foot off the gas, relax a little. Yeah, I suppose. Though it's kind of boring. It's kind of boring. Yeah, we should make something happen, maybe. You know, maybe we should make some news. Someone needs to, to do make some something. headlines. Yeah, let's make some headlines. <laughs> let's, let's 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 mix it up for a bit. You know, we need a villain in our lives. Mm. Everyone does. Oh yeah, that's what we've been missing. A villain. There's no villain. There's no one to blame for our problems. Yeah, there's, I I need I need to fu- I need to become friends with someone. Wait, let me think about these words very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I like then pin all my problems on. Yeah, I need to become friends with someone that will ultimately like fuck me over in some way. So in the which case, then I will have some gossip news. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so an in- interesting character, local character maybe. Um, fair play, fair play. I I am gonna delete all this, but uh, like, um, like I'm gonna delete like what we had just said there. But do you think that person listens to this podcast? Uh no no, no do I doubt it. I well doubt it. maybe maybe checks in every now and then I'd li- I'd leave it in see what happens you know maybe we'd have something interesting to say next episode then. <laughs> 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 let's just say things are you know really uh, questionable and uh, maybe shouldn't be said and then we'll see if it has any ramifications it's like a two l- weeks like on. a small butterfly eff- butterfly effect yeah me. yeah butterfly effect yeah yeah we could do like an actual live experiment on the podcast where we call someone out directly. You know, dox them or whatever, and then see if they notice or if someone else notices. Yeah, oh my god, that's but such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever reacts. It's just like we're so alone in this universe. <laughs> no, I know. I no. doxed you and you didn't even know. <laughs> no, I know no one listens to this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we have proof finally. <laughs> but uh The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. The metrics. Our, our one listener in Israel and uh, Argentina, they're still going strong. Still but strong. I don't know. If that, that doesn't sound very real to me. <laughs> but um, I, I've had a few people call to my... Uh, I had, uh, speaking of charity workers, I had a few charity workers call to my door recently. The election shit or just... No, people just asking for money at, like, at my door. Oh, fuck off. But like, I'm really... Uh, yeah, but like yeah, you only get sick in that si- stuck in that situation. And like, I'm just an easy sell. Like, 
I'm just easy to kind of influence that way. I'm very gullible. And they're, they're just like, oh, like, you know, do you hate when, you know, uh, children are blown up and like you know uh, women are starving and Bad. stuff <laughs> i was like ah, i love that stuff man get out of here <laughs> did you did you get signed up to something i did yeah i signed yeah. up to oxfam man amnesty international got me with got me with something like that before yeah in town yep yeah that's harsh stop me it was like you know they have the best in the business though oh, oxfam man. aren't as good absolutely just nailed me with the yeah. it was like you know height the absolute peak of the uh, repeal the eight move like movement there walking, got my headphones on. This woman sticks her hand up, like, yeah. And she's like, How do you feel? Do you support women getting abortions? Like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, No. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then fucking 20 minutes go by and I'm signed up and I'm giving them five euro a month. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I walk away, don't even know what's after happening. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's an absolute swindle. You get swindled. They're so good at it. Yeah, they are really good. And like, it's, it's also like, you can't even really complain because, like, they're actually, like, Amnesty and Oxfam are actually really good yeah, fair organizations. Enough. But like, <laughs> but you're exploding my weakness. Yeah, don't yeah, don't be my, my coming weakness, to me in my hour of need. My, my weakness to show that I'm woke. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be virtue signaling to all these people. <laughs> I need to tell people on a podcast that I signed up to this. <laughs> I need everyone to know. Are my fam- family and friends going to know if I sign up to this? <laughs> <laughs> Will you release my name? <laughs> it's like show people. It's like a thing, you know, like when Will you like, take a picture and put this on your social media? <laughs> Great guy, Max. I <laughs> up today for two euro a month. Uh, they, they got me for five euro a week. Five euro a week? A week, yeah, yeah. Like Because this guy... He, 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 Damn, like, this guy was good. He, he called my door. My landlord was in, and he wouldn't answer the door. So I, I went down, and I answered the door. And I have like... I, I can't see who's at the door. I'm going in blind. Anytime I open the door, it could be anybody. <laughs> it could literally be anybody. It could be OJ, it could be Michael Morris, it could be my ma or whatever, you know? I just opened the door, and it's this guy, uh, he's like... I think he's like, you know, you think he's from Oxfam, but you can never tell, like, all these scammers going around these days. And he's like a Rasta. He's like a Rastafarian, like one of those white Rastafarian guys. And uh, he was 100% part of Oxfam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, he, he, I was wearing, like, literally, like, pajamas. It was like three o'clock in the day, and I was working from home. And I came downstairs and I had, like, this shirt on that said, like, it was something like, uh, procrastinators of the world unite. <laughs> <laughs> Some, some stupid graphic t-shirt which I just slept in and then didn't take off and then I had this uh, I had this bracelet which is like the, the colours of the Palestinian flag mm-hmm. um, and he was like hey man I like your bracelet it's like I, I have one of them at home as well and he's like Wagwan one of the uh, the Rasta brothers and I was like no <laughs> no man it's, it's something else <laughs> it's something else. <laughs> it's something to do with Palestine. He's like, all oh, right, fair enough. But he's he was bang on, like he's dead on. Uh, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was, one, he's brother. Like, he's like, what, come on, brother? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like I'm clearly not a Rastafarian. Um, though maybe I did sign up that one time. But we did. <laughs> we, oh yeah, we, we did. We did. <laughs> he just he sniffed it out. He knew. Yeah, yeah he knew. Um, I just looked a bit dishevelled. But um, so he 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 got chatting to me. And my landlord was there working around the background, and he could he could hear me getting like pulled into this thing, but he never intervened at any point. No, like called me into the house. He was like, "Fuck you! I, I I make enough money off you, and now I'm gonna let you be sw- like swindled by someone else." <laughs> and then eventually, he was like, "Oh, would you like to give five euro?" Uh, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, send me on the link." He's like, "Do you have your IBAN details to hand?" I was like, "What? But IBAN details?" And I was like, "I was too far into the." It's like some cost fallacy. Yeah. I was too far into this conversation, this exchange. Man, it's actually mad I went how back much upsta- that works. Yeah, I went back up. Yeah, he literally, we've been talking for five minutes. He's like, do you have your eye band? I was like, yeah, yeah. I went back upstairs, got my, gave my eye band. It's crazy <laughs> how we do that. <laughs> it's like, I was just so, yeah. And I basically walked away and signed me up for everything. And then, like, I went back upstairs. And I was like, oh, I felt good for like, about 10 seconds. And then I was like, was that a scam? <laughs> so, like, am I, is my bank account going to be emptied now? Um basically i called him the next day i was like can i cancel that please <laughs> <laughs> i just gave him like a lump sum i gave him 50 euro uh, That's good enough but like i'm not i'm not committing to weekly payments no that no we like weekly that's 20 like, so a month and i have to call my bank if i want to cancel it no, no. I'll, g- I'll give you a lump sum yeah Do you, have, you, have you been getting much um like um campaigners uh i had one i had the labor guy in town mm. eddie he showed up, he showed up to my door, and he was like, hey, he was like proper like showman, like selling himself, 
Um, I was like, yeah, hey, Eddie, because I knew I recognized him, but I don't know him at all. Yeah. It's like, hey, Eddie, we're chatting away. He's like, would you consider voting for Labour? I was like, I'll think about it. And then he just, you know, was like, oh, fair enough. I'll see. <laughs> I'll see. He walked away. I closed the door. That was it. Yeah, because I like this is my first one just before you came. Um, Social Democrat. It wasn't her. It was one of her campaigners or whatever. Mm. And uh, like he hands me the the piece or whatever, and I like look at it and I like, flip it over to the back, and I literally go Social Democrats. And like my brain literally, <laughs> like my brain literally goes like p- like the political spectrum just like appears in my in my brain. Yeah. And it's like ticking forward. And it's like, oh yeah, they're about there. And then I look at him. Goes like, yeah, you are all right with me. He <laughs> <laughs> goes, will you consider voting? I was like, I'll consider it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot. Um, yeah, we've only had the one. You've only had one so far. Oh no, there's been a bunch of them going to the. I thought it was you that was coming to the door. That's why. I, that's why I answered. And I opened the door. I'm like, oh fuck's sake! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just make this as quick as possible. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Although I would like it to be like, you know, Nash's party or like A and Two or like Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael. I was like, no. Yeah. Just tell yeah. them to their face. No. Yeah, we haven't haven't had anything like that. Um, I wonder, do they actually campaign, or do they just stick people stick shit through people's mailboxes? Yeah, I don't know, cause. I've never seen like you always see the videos of of uh, like the normal parties going around campaigning and like going door to door and stuff. But I've never I've never seen a video of them campaigning or no. heard of anyone having them come to their door. Did they just do social media because it's safe? Yeah, it's pretty safer. And then they they get they get their their shit kicked in at the door. Like as it stands, like the like if you're far left party and you go campaign door to door, you're gonna run into a lot of like arguments and stuff. Yep. <clears throat> but they like obviously the far right is even like like most normal people would like be kind of uh you know not happy with someone like that showing up at their door yeah. um so they probably if a nazi comes to my door i'm not happy about it yeah yeah you just be like fuck off you know i'll be much more happy if it's a communist <laughs> exactly yeah, like, yeah even, just like, as, even as a regular person it was just just yeah just like the, the numbers game for them is so much worse so i don't think unless they're in like a really safe area like, there's some places out there, like, you know, Texas Chainsaw, like, f- fucking, what's that, deliverance kind of stuff, like, yeah, yeah. communities out in the middle of nowhere that are, like, have nothing, absolutely nothing. You only get there by, like, horse and cart. They probably go campaigning in those places and then, like, bust them into the, the polling stations. But, yeah, I'd say they're... I'd say they're yeah, like, Balbriggan is crazy. Balbriggan, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> all those fucking Swords, weird, weird fuck places. <laughs> Donna Bay, weird Jesus. places. Jesus. <laughs> But uh, was it Lusk? Is that where? Is that where <laughs> Lusk, Lusk isn't even real. It's not a real place. Yeah. I've never actually been to Lusk, but um, yeah, because because uh, in D two there's like wait, no, wait, there's wait, none of that at all. I know that we're I know that we're not trying to dox people. But where's <laughs> from again? Is he not, is he from Balbergen? Donna Bay. Donna Bay. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oops. Yeah. I think Balbergen off that list. Wrong place. They mean to sh- shame. Balbergen's the same. <laughs> it's exact same. What's it outside like greater like? Went up 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 like past the airport. <laughs> It's a, it's the it's fucking it's Malahide, Max. Jesus Lord. It's like Mad Max. Yeah. Malahide. Yeah. Wouldn't go near there. No. That's an no-go area. <laughs> That's an no-go area for me. But um in D2 yeah, we have we've none of that at all. Everyone's like very palatable. Mhm. There's no there's no extremes. Yeah, there's no extremes cuz like you're just going to get ran out of town. Yeah. Cuz like everyone's like what? What? What do you what mean? Did you social say? housing. Why would I be buying <laughs> social housing? Or like so something like invest in yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just they're not gonna they're not gonna find any any, any leeway allies. there. Any any allies, no, not at all. But yeah, it's weird, it's a weird time. You're gonna yeah. vote, yeah? Yeah, it's like There's few people we know about or in the area anyway. Yeah. Or not voting, running. Yeah, but they're not in my area. No? No. Is it not uh your man is he uh, I suppose, uh, what's his name? Fucking Josh O'Rourke. He's from around here. Who the fuck is that? He's running for Sinn Féin. He's just as a uh, council. I don't know what that is. He's just he's some guy. I've met him a few times. Yeah. He's sound. There's like he's only twenty one. Yeah, there's a lot of young people though. I know like someone that's running as an independent. I'm like, yep, that's good, cool, but you're not in my area. Your man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he looks nice, but yeah, yeah. He speaks Irish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> shout out to Barry. Um, <laughs> And we can release this. The fucking election comes out afterwards, so that's fine. <laughs> 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 not that we're gonna be elected by then. Yeah, it's not. They're they're gonna not sw- yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna get done for election the interference. <laughs> <laughs> the Parapod. the Parapod files. Stop the count. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I know someone else is running for Sinn Fein as well, but that's also not in my area. Shame. 
I think is just like not the dogs myself, but I think it's yeah, <laughs> everyone's getting dogs. <laughs> yeah, what what what's what's going on? It's just like it's just the I have absolutely no fucking idea. Just, I don't know how because you know like the electoral area. I have absolutely no idea like where it goes to. Yeah, what are the boundaries? What are the borders? No idea. We need hard borders or smaller or lesser borders so I can vote for people I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, we I need know bigger you. borders. <laughs> we need open borders in Dublin. We need one constituency. You know, there's one people. Too, there's too many constituencies. There really is. There's too many. Too many people. Yeah, there's too many. There's too many people. We need, we need, we need to we run out. Someone needs to run on that platform. There's too many people in Dublin. We need to. We, we need, need to move them somewhere else. <laughs> We need new counties being established. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to reclaim the sea. We need to move out. Uh, what's, what was it called? Uh, Mud Island. Remember Mud Island? No. Ballybock. Ballybock was reclaimed from the sea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be called, it used to be a leper colony. But you can reclaim a lot. Uh, there's, there's so much more you can reclaim Fair as view. well. Let's just continue that experience. Fair view, yeah, yeah. Out to, out to the, the, the seafront. Take yeah. it back from the sea. Well, yeah, but if, if you reclaim the seafront, then you're getting you know, millions of euro worth of property. Mm-hmm. Uh, land. All publicly owned, and you can build whatever you can build. You know, public toilets, um, you know, housing estates, social housing, theme parks, white water rafting facilities, <laughs> whatever, whatever, <laughs> you, whatever you want, <laughs> more hotels, all, all <laughs> hotels as far as the eye can see, all owned by the state. You know, so. What well, okay? Just because from what you were just saying there about reclaiming land from the sea, um, this has got absolutely nothing to do with anything. Do you ever think it's mad that like turtles and tortoises look the same? They're basically the same creature, but one is water and one is land. Are they not both kind of water? No, tortoises cannot swim. They can't. Well, maybe uh, they can a little bit, but they're not. They're not like they're not turtles. Like turtles are fucking yeah. swimming. I remember I saw a video on uh, uh there's a video on YouTube like years ago. Did you ever see it where it's like it's like this this lady saving a a turtle, but it turns out. And it's like this whole, you know, like the the, the videos where like it's on, you, you get, it comes up on Facebook and like your granny sent it to you. And it's like they, they nurse this kitten back to health or whatever. Mm-hmm. She found this turtle and like nursed it back to health and then re- like just chucks it into a river. Oh, yeah. And it's someone, a someone, someone comments on it and he's like, that's a tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> like he, just, he, just, he just threw that thing to its death. <laughs> it was just an, it was like an execution video. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I haven't seen that. <laughs> I've seen it. But like, what happened there? Like, what? Like, there's. What happened there? Yeah. Like, they must have a very close relative that. Mm. Me- meant for this to happen, allowed this to happen. Yeah, yeah. But Mad. like, why is it? Is it not the salt that fucks up tortoises? Like I'm sure it's a lot of things. I'm sure it's a lack of air that fucks them up as yeah, well. But how can turtles then breathe? Because turtles must breathe air, but they can just hold their breath. They can just hold their breath really long. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. how does that turn them into a separate species? I don't know. You no. Know? Maybe if we start holding our breath now, <gasps> we'll see. We'll see the changes. <laughs> Fucking water people. <laughs> yeah, well, there's there's some there's, isn't there some people that are like genetically better. Yeah, you had that like webbed feet and hand people. Like yeah, they've the, di- <laughs> the, the, the the divers. <laughs> those <laughs> webbed feet, those freaks. <laughs> they have to dive to eat their food. No, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I just know it's there to see. <laughs> just sounds so many. <laughs> we need. You know those people. Oh yeah, yeah. You know those webbed feet people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what like I wonder like what. What changes will we see in the future? Yeah. Will will a new species emerge as the dominant one? Will it be Spoiler alert, the apes? Will we become a planet of apes? A planet of the apes. Well, we already are apes. <laughs> well, uh, well, actually. Okay, so our new franchise review because we have not done one in fucking ages. We are going to take a crack and go through the OG Planet of the Apes movies. The ones that are really, like... The ones where, like, I heard that there's, you know, Planet of the Apes. And then I heard that there was the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes remake. And then they made all these new ones. And then I found out that there's five sequels or something like that to the original Planet of the Apes movie. Yeah, yeah. Which is, like... Like... I just think that's crazy that no one talks about any of those movies. Yeah, uh, because... I'd always known about they're always on like MGM and stuff mm. and film four, like beneath the planet of the apes would be on. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And you turn it on, it'd just be so incomprehensible because it'd be like a decade into the lore of the franchise, and it's not explaining anything that's going on. Nope. You're just in the planet of the apes. Um, but I didn't realize that it's it was like a, a real case of it was the first real case of a multimedia franchise. It was the first real case in the the public imagination of. 
a of a franchise that was kind of like played out to the death where people were kind of complaining about how many movies were, were coming out mm. but you know these days people don't watch these movies at all and like the franchise is back but only back after like a 30 year hiatus I think Planet of the Apes is like the longest running franchise. Oh, I said that and then I just thought of James, James Bond. Bond. Yeah. So maybe not. It's pretty not, no. It's maybe American franchise. Yeah, maybe James, American. James Bond's American. I don't know. Technically. Technically. But, but yeah, no, it was, it was really, really saturated the market because it had, it had a, a TV show. It had like an animated series. had movies. Animated series. I said yeah. that thing is fucking weird. Yeah, i say it is. Um, I haven't seen it now, but I had like a multimedia like franchise empire uh, through the seventies and I think into the eighties, and then it just kind of fell apart. You know, the fall of the Planet of the Apes, and then it went until it was revived in two thousand, and then died again very quickly, and then was revived again uh, ten years later. So it is. It's a very. It's a really interesting franchise, and uh, obviously it's also based on a book as well. So it's like multimedia in various different ways and they also do cool things with different kind of uh, different kind of modes of delivery in the new the new franchise or the new series anyway mm. um, especially early on they used to have like kind of short films that they'd release before the films would come out before the sequels would come out and just give like kind of just like weird kind of like one shot um, stories from different parts of this universe as things were happening and I could follow along because it was all kind of uh, happening shortly after the last film that just come out and uh they're they're really good i remember uh but i don't think they they've done them for the new one no i don't th- i don't think that doesn't sound um recognizable to me mm. uh sorry I was, I was slightly distracted because of looking up the longest running fr- film franchises <laughs> godzilla godzilla is at number four. four now this is also taking into account number of movies which i don't think counts because num- because number count, 5 though. is the mcu but that doesn't count that doesn't count no um, but Godzilla, nineteen fifty four to twenty twenty three. Well, that's a that I think is probably that was like okay, that's the longest that's one. Because long. then the one after that is some anime that's been running since nineteen eighty to two thousand and twenty three. But that doesn't that's because it's forty two movies. But Wong Fei Hung, <laughs> probably pronounced that horribly. Um, nineteen forty nine until two thousand and eighteen. With 123 films in the franchise. Korean, is it? Uh, Chinese martial arts. Chinese martial arts. Wait, I so it's gone from 1948 or 1949? 1949. From the, the, the end of the Chinese Civil War till 2018. Yeah. That's so immediately after the end of the Chinese Civil yep. War. Wow. Um, now, I don't know if it's all the same franchise. It's basically, it's the, it's just like the Wei Shun, like martial arts films, like the... You've seen this guy before. That guy. Oh, okay, yeah. It's just a franchise based on his name. It's like James Wong Bond. Oh, okay, okay. Um, he's been immortalized in over... Okay, he's a Chinese martial artist and folk hero who lived through the back half of the 1800s and passed away in the 1920s. Yep, so that's the longest uh, running franchise. Doesn't look so tough. I'd keep that shit out of him. <laughs> Old fuck. <laughs> He's a real person. I'm gonna look at the. Uh, I see. I don't want the amount of movies. I'm f- like, is yeah, this yeah. this by, this is the, by length? Yeah, this is easily like one of the longest ones. Like James Bond is obviously one of the longest ones as well. Oh wait, IGN source of all truth. James Bond, Planet of the Apes, advertisement, Sherlock Holmes. Ah, that's not serious. Batman, mm, Dracula, mm, Godzilla. Yeah, Harry Potter. No, Halloween also. Yeah, pretty long. Rocky, no. Exodus, no. Star Wars, meh. MCU, no. Indiana Jones, no. Mission Impossible, no. Star Trek, okay, I'm done with that. Okay, Planet of the Apes. This Planet is of the Apes. probably one of the most important sci-fi films of all time. Yeah, it's great. Um, A film that, like, everyone knows, mm. but I feel like not many people have seen. It's surprising when people haven't seen it, no? Because, like, why would you... Because it's class. It is class. Like, this film surprised me with how good it was. Yeah, it is. It's actually really good. It's really good. But also, like, why Like, but also, like, why would you watch this? Like, you know what the ending is. You know? I suppose. But, like, it's not one of those, like, it's not like a Friday the 13th where it's like, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, actually, mm. the Friday Thirteenth is a bad example because you're like, oh, that's not what I thought the ending was at all. <laughs> it's like, okay, weird. <laughs> it's his mom. This has nothing to do with <laughs> with Jason. Yeah, uh, it's his ma. That's a, it's, it's a very bad example. But like, this film is it, it's uh, so much more than the ending, mm-hmm. and the ending is just really good. The ending is iconic. Because it's what, so horrifying. Yeah, it's really horrifying, and it's it wouldn't be as iconic if the film itself wasn't, you know, you know, tops. Yeah. If the film itself wasn't so popular, uh, didn't have such a mass appeal, wasn't so iconic, um, that's why everyone saw that ending. And even the ending itself, or like, it's kind of, like, when you think about the ending and how it's perceived, maybe in, like, the common imagination, or, like, the popular imagination, it's... Oh, he didn't know. It turns out he was on Earth all along. But he knows he's on Earth. Like, that's pretty much... It's like, oh, no, humans lived here, like, yeah. many years ago. And he spends half the film trying to convince the apes of that. And it's like, the, the tragedy or the, the twist with the final shot is the fact that, like, it's kind of like, you know, humans have basically been genocided. And they've the, the, the apes have, you know, or the implications that the apes have deliberately destroyed everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, wiped humans from the face, face of the Earth. Dr. Mm-hmm. Zaius is, a, is, you know... Is like the Hitler of 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 the, of the apes, and the humans are just gone. Well, the hi- well, the humans blasted themselves into. A, yeah, exactly. A, into as well, yeah, yeah. Blast themselves into annihilation. Uh-huh. Um, because that's the whole like passages of the the great ape texts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, can I t- okay? So, uh, do you want to know something about this movie that really bothered me? Hmm. And bothered me like almost immediately. Oh. So when they well actually you know, there's, there's two things that, that bothered me. One was when they first stumble across the humans because they're on this like they 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 think they're on a different planet at the start. Yeah, yeah. And they're going through and like oh my god there's there's life here cool, and then they stumble across all these humans in a field. And they don't really react at all. They're just like ah, oh, humans. Yeah, yeah. It's like what the fuck? You're on a different <laughs> planet. I feel like you should. I feel like you should care a little bit more. Yeah. If you're stumbling like oh they resemble humans, but like. I feel like you should uh, react a bit different to that. Um, the other thing that annoyed me was... So his... Uh, I cannot remember the main character. Is it Kirk? Is that his name? Uh, oh, what is his... Yeah, what is his main... Oh, fuck me. I'll look it up. Um, the main character is... Whatever his name Charlton is. Charlton Heston, anyway. Yeah, Heston. Yeah. He, um, you know, he gets injured in the th- in the throat and he's not able to speak. And that is why, like... He's not able to communicate with the apes. Taylor, yeah. Taylor, yeah. Taylor. But he sees he sees the female ape, whatever her name is. I can't remember. Zero. Zero. The only ape I remember the name of is Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas. Just because Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Zayas. Um, he sees her with a, with a pad. And for some reason, he, like, he tries to snatch it out of her hand. Why... Why does he not motion to her and be like, can you give me that so I can write? He's trying to move the plot forward, man. I know. I like. He's trying to move the plot I'm, forward. I'm there to be like, I know why they're not doing this because you need to have this tension. But like, why the fuck is he not mentioning to her? Like, give me that so I can write. Like, I, I can mo. I don't have to be able to speak. She's like, oh, he's so smart. He's trying to, see- he can tell he's trying to speak. Bro, use your hands and communicate. There are other ways to communicate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Well, to be fair, the other ape is standing there, and he's like, "Look at this guy! Look at this this man! He's trying. He's pretending he can speak because he's mouthing words and stuff. So maybe you know, Zero would be like, oh, give him the notebook because he's signing for a notebook, and he'd be like, oh, shut the fuck up! What are you talking about? Like he's just he's he's aping what we're doing, you know? Mm. He's just copying or whatever. Uh, he needed to move the plot forward. Basically, know, yeah. he needed yeah. to get in there, and he needed to he needed to create some tension. I feel like they could have cut like half an hour out this movie just for that. No, yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> There is. I, I I remember when I first because my dad really liked this movie, and uh, I remember I think I watched it with him first. And for there was like that that sequence when he's first captured, it seems to go on for fucking ages. It goes on for ages. It goes on for eight. But this film's only it's like less an hour than, and a half. Yeah, it's it's less than two hours, maybe an hour forty or something. Yeah. Um. And but like it feels like it goes on for fucking ages. And when I was a kid, I was like, this is taking hours. <laughs> I remember two thousand one used to be on sometimes as well. I'm like, what the fuck is this monkey bullshit <laughs> happening going on? These these sequences <laughs> going on for twenty fucking minutes. <laughs> it's like, is this the same thing? It didn't make any sense. So funny why the planet the A thinking that it's fucking. Yeah, it's watch. just it's just like nothing's happening here. It's just a lot of monkeys going around, and uh, but no, it, it it does kind of go on for a bit. It's maybe more like uh, subtly done. For example, in like the the first of the the new series, 
Rise of Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot more of that kind of, you know, it's 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 just done, done better. Like driving the plot forward while the, the yeah. main characters behind bars and it's all done a lot better. But it, it, it this is quite a low budget film for what it was, because when they first wanted to make it, it was the book that it's based on. It's the the apes have like a very like advanced like futuristic society. It's like an alien kind of civilization that just happens to be run by apes. Mm. Uh, they couldn't make the movie like that because it just they it didn't make any financial sense, and they didn't they had a very limited budget, so they rewrote the script to um, place the ape civilization in like a kind of uh, medieval period, which is the one that we see where they're just kind of living in like huts and stuff, and like yeah, it's like a, it's like a post apocalyptic wasteland mm. that they've repurposed like several thousand years into the future, but they're still in the process of like building up the same capacity that humans had the humans humans once had anyway um so it's, it is all very it's all very basic uh like kind of stripped back because the film was very limited yeah and that's why it's, it's success is also so iconic because it's it actually was a small production that ended up making bank absolute but i think it made like 40 million which was huge in those days um and was immediately very popular it's very like socially and culturally relevant and you know, in touch, like the whole, like, kind of, it, there's like an intergenerational conflict throughout the film. Yeah. Which is never talked about nowadays because it's not the most important thing about the film. But it is there. It's like a very, it's a very 60s movie. Yeah. And Charlton Heston's in there as well, like, kind of like winking, smiling about. It's kind of a funny movie as well. There's yeah. points where it's, it's, it is like kind of winking at the camera. Um, and then there's obviously the whole kind of backdrop of the, uh, you know, the, the arrogance of man and w- when they first arrive on this, this, what they think is a new planet. And one of Taylor's fellow astronauts, his comrades, the f- the first thing he does, he plants an American flag and he puts like the stones behind it. And Charlie Heston has that 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 uh, kind of like iconic image of him like laughing maniacally into yeah. into the distance. It's like, this is so stupid. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. And then the, obviously the the nuclear backdrop as well. Um, so it's really it's really cool. It's really uh, it's 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 on the button, you know. It's it's really it's 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 a lot better than it's kind of it's gi- giving credit for. Yeah, I there's, think there's way more because like when I was going into this movie, I was like, okay, yeah, like I know what this movie is. You know, it's it's Planet of the Apes. It's damn you, damn you all the hell. It's the you fucking blow it up. It's the en- it's the ending. That's like what everyone knows, and it's Doctor Sayus, Doctor Sayus, and all this shit. Mm. But watching it like for the first time, I was like, man, this has got some like cool shit to say about like, you know, as you're saying, the intergener the intergenerational conflict. It's about you know nuclear bombs. It's about it's a anti um oh, what, like religious dogma film yeah like there's a lot so of faith and science yeah like that whole thing where it's just like um it doesn't make any sense for doctor says to be the head of the church and also be head of sci- scientific research and he's not like doctor says like well, the truth. There's no way that you can uh, disturb the truth. So they're both uh, they're both hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And it's like that, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, man. But like just like that type of stuff is like he's like uh, this. He uses faith and scientific reasoning to argue his points, mm-hmm. um, which is just like you know that is just what the church did for you know forever. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's got way more to say, especially because like you look at it. Um, and you have the um oh my god the bit where dr Sayus is being faced with the unbearable truth that humans were intelligent and he's just like yeah blow it up yeah, it, yeah. the truth must be sealed because like apes cannot we cannot know yeah. we cannot like the truth of the world cannot be cannot be revealed it's better to live in ignorance and believe ourselves to be great than to face the the brutal fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's obviously that the parallels are there as well. It's pretty. Uh, I don't know. It's it's because just considering the time, it's a pretty kind of out there movie in terms of what the stuff that it says like that. Sixties, seventies, man. Six, yeah. But it's it's just weird. It's just it's just kind of strange because it's quite daring. Yeah, you, know, you wouldn't see that made today, man. <laughs> it, though it is such a kind of like a generic point, but it has like that. It just. It has those kind of incisive uh, kind of themes, which, you know, at, at no point they're kind of in your face, but they're always there in the background. They're yeah. always, they're, they're like stitched into the movie, like to talk about, there's, like, there's like ecology in there and just like kind of, and they're like, you, like Heather, they kind of like persecute Zira and uh, her her mate 
whatever his name is. They're both in like the rest of the sequels as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they persecute the two apes who are kind of trying to uh, show the way, like show, like um, expose the fact that humans were intelligent and that this this guy Taylor is actually. It can can speak and that he's he's you know he's not what he seems. Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape! Yeah, it's, it's great, great lines, great kind of great moments. He, like that, there's that chase j- that that chase scene where he breaks out of the zoo and he's running around for fucking ten, fifteen minutes. It goes on for fucking ages. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then, like when it hits, you're like, oh, it's like this is like that's the moment. That's why mm-hmm. it's so iconic. Um, and then yeah, the the Zira and her, her other uh, ape friend are like persecuted for for wanting to bring the truth to light by these old kind of like you know stodgy the old generation the old guard even though these people are like you know these these apes are like thousands of years in the future and it's like kind of a cycle cycle of everything in life because the original book isn't about is i think the original book is like a race allegory and it, yeah. obviously there's a race allegory in here as well and there's there was a lot drawn on that after the film oh my god i need to read you a letterbox oh review so because like you know we're gonna watch this movie i was like man this is like you know an iconic beloved film the people hate this like what uh what are like the negative reviews for this film like this is a half star review yeah would have been a 3.5 out of 10 if it wasn't for the overpowering unignorable racism and sexism like yeah like there is some of that Mm. imagine being so racist you whitewash a fucking orangutan Whitewashing orangutan. You whitewash an orangutan. What, what does that mean? I think this is review, orang- What does I, it mean? Yeah, the, yeah. You see, I I read that <laughs> review and I was like, oh brother, I, oh brother, what you're after saying is way more racist. Yeah, than- I, I think you're looking in the mirror, my friend. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking what, about? What What are you implying by saying that? <laughs> what What do you mean? What? Yeah. Um, I meant to bring that whitewash up. Whitewash the orangutan. I, I I had to I had to screenshot that because I was like, oh, that's a good one to bring up on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh like. Yeah, you know that, like, the attempts of, like, being so, like, culturally conscious and, like, so woke that you inadvertently become, you like, bend back you around. bend back around yeah. <laughs> and you say something incredibly racist. Yeah, you kind of expose your, you know, whatever inner biases are there. Like, this, like, the film is kind of like that. Or I think it's very, because I think the, the original novel is French. And French have, you know, Oh, French, say less. The French have their own fucking weird <laughs> shit going on. I always have, especially like, you know, uh, like, you know, race and like, you know, sex and just like politics and like fucking everything. Uh, literally fucking everything. <laughs> yeah, literally. Whereas uh, the Americans, especially at the time, like the 60s, you know, have like, you have MLK running around, you got nukes, you know, you got, uh, you got, you got the, the Cold War, you got the USSR, it's all this crazy stiff stuff mixed in together. And you can see it in the film. Like it is really, it's a, such an American film from that time. Um, but then, like, I think looking at the film as a kind of cultural touchstone, people use it as nearly like a Rorschach test to, like, just, you know, read whatever they want yeah. to. Where, the, you know, the racists be like, look at this, this is what's going to happen. And, like, the people, you know, the other people be like, oh, this film is, is the racist, this this film is racist, or, like, or, uh, you know, people from every different angle will have a, a way to kind of critique it. Um, whereas at the end of the day, it is just kind of like a really silly science fiction movie yeah that is it's a bit s- goofy that is serious um but it doesn't like take itself it's not like a solemn film it's not like this is the horror of nuclear war this is mm-hmm. the horror of what we're facing there, there is the the, the the kind of the raw winks of the camera there's the w- silly chase sequences there's the a joke laugh. here and there it's a, it's a silly science fiction film that uh, the best kind which has actual serious themes and which talks about real things that were happening mm-hmm. um but yeah, it has there's so many different ways you can come at it. Yeah, and it's so it's just so much better than and it's like it's given any credit for it. Yeah, because it's like it's way there's way more going on in this film than like than the big twist. Because that's like what this film is boiled down to. It's a yeah, crazy yeah. twist. But there, the reason why it's such a crazy twist is because like the fucking journey that this mm. film brings you on up until that point. Um, yeah, like it's a it's a classic for a reason. Yeah, it's, it's good. How long did it take you to get used to the monkey masks? Yeah, it, it it's difficult. It is it's difficult. difficult because you were so used to the, the actual the CGI, which is so advanced. Even the Tim Burton one. The Tim Burton one is still grim, like yeah, but like it's still like the, the prosthetics are yeah. better. Yeah, 
they they are really bad. Like the their mouth, faces just the, don't move yeah, at all. <laughs> it's really it's, it takes a while to get used to. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it it works. It works because like that's that's part of the charm again. Like it's just you can't you don't have to take it fully seriously because it is just a lot of people running around in monkey suits talking to each other. Uh, but they're making a point, you know. They're not. They're not. They're not literally talking about the planet of the apes. They're talking about other, talking about other things. That's what they're the talking about other planets. They're talking about you know other <laughs> shit, man. They're talking about yeah, you know, they're talking yeah. about this world, man. They're talking about our world, our future. Yeah, the yeah. future of the post-apocalypse, like yeah, planet of the apes or Mad Max. Yeah. I have seen another, another classic. I've seen Mad Max. No wait, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. This is a film that I think we talked about briefly last episode. We did. We kind of cut into it. Yeah, because it's like, oh, I don't really know. It looks like It doesn't look that good. I was reading about it. And I was like, sounds like we were completely wrong. Oh, brother, we were. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> brother. I was we, like, I think we got that one wrong. We were so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we were so wrong. So, it's the quickest we've ever been proved wrong. Oh, if only we held off. I like We talked about this movie on like Thursday and I went to go see this film on Sunday, and I was like, oh, we fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked up. Um, yeah, okay. So, I had faith in this movie. I was looking forward to it, but I was like, oh, prequels? Like, I don't really care that much. Like, who cares about prequels? Because I know what's going to happen. Like, I know that the main antagonists and stuff like that. Like, you know, do you have, uh, you know, you have Morton Joe. You have the guy, the, the, the big dude with the with the with the fancy suit and the monocle you have like the guy that like shoots from the gun bullet farm and stuff like that mm. i was like oh like i know whatever cool and then you chris hemsworth and i didn't fully understand what chris hemsworth role from the trailers were yeah is he a villain oh man is he a villain is holy he villain, shit bro is he praetorian jack is it i keep hearing is that him yeah yeah bro he is so fucking good like I, there are so few villains in, like, especially, like, in a prequel. Mm. Like, there are so few villains that, like, I really, like, despise. Fucking hate this dude. Fucking hate this dude. He is so, it's like, so basically what his character is, is that he is, like, a guy that, like, thinks he's, like, a prophet. Mm. He's gonna save the people, and his whole thing is that, like uh, at a certain point he comes up to like a Martin Joe's, you know, gaff, and he's like, uh, "We're gonna take the water and we're gonna give it to the people." You know, you're gonna follow, whatever my name is, um, and then Martin Joe's like, "Well, you know, I'm a fascist. I don't really care. Um, you know, you're as much full of shit as I am." And he's like, "No, you're gonna see." And he is an absolute fuck up, like the Chris Hemsworth character, absolute fuck up that has just managed to bullshit his way mm. into getting into the, where he is and being able to follow people, get people to follow him with a pipe dream that things will get better, mm. knowing that they will not. Yeah, yeah. I see. And he does some fucking maniacal shit. There's a bit where he tortures some people and it's so well done because like he's torched like he's getting them to be tortured and he just sits down and then he's just he just like stares off to the distance like completely bored of everything that's going on because of like how fucked up the world is he's like i'm bored of this i'm sick of it and then eventually he snaps back into it and he's like okay right that's it we're done like let's let's move on mm. he is so good and i lay that bit at the end where like you've seen it in the trailer it's like have it in, have you got it in you to make it epic Mm. When that line hits, you're like, "Ooh!" <laughs> just like the cut, it's this big monologue that he's given, uh-huh. and uh, it just, it just, it just works. What's his relation to Furiosa? So, do I? What's, just, what's the a rough outline yeah. premise of the movie? Rough outline is that Furiosa is in the green place, and she gets taken. Yeah, and she ends up getting to Chris Hemsworth, and Chris Hemsworth's like, "Cool, I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna make you into a little warrior," and then um, they go to. Um, and Martin Joe's, and then he Chris Hemsworth ends up taking over something that Martin Joe needs very badly, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Okay, right, we're gonna make a trade. Um, I'm gonna run this shit, and you're gonna bring me food and stuff, and in return, you can have Furiosa because she's gonna make a nice little breeder for when she goes up." Mm. And Martin Joe's like, "Perfect, grand cool. Um, and then Furiosa 
like gets out of that and then becomes the driver of the rigs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that people might not super like this movie because like the great thing about Free Road is Free Road is like a fucking two hour long action scene. It's fucking bananas. There's like, I may like I think that that's part of the like that's why I love it is that it's basically like a two hour long crazy action scene. Yeah. I know so many people that don't like Mad Max because there really isn't a plot. It is... Really? Yeah, I know... No, I've, I've never heard that. Oh, I know so many people that are just not into it. Yeah. Not but like, it's kind of on... It's like, that's fucking on the box. Like, while you're watching the yeah, movie... If... But, like, people expect, like, something. Okay. It's what I love about the film. Yeah. But so other people don't like that. All right. Um, it's like watching Specific Rim. It's like, just a load of robots, man, you know? <laughs> Watching Gundam or something. I didn't really get it. I didn't really get it. What a, what a bit of plot. Um, <laughs> what? Fur- so I think Furiosa is okay. Right. Let me. Let me. Ex- is it the same kind of thing? No. And that's that right. more of a story. Oh, like yeah. To a certain point, where I was like, oh, I don't think I like this movie. Why? Because it was. Is it, is it action packed? Is a high octane? Okay. So tour the, de force. So the film was like two hours and forty minutes. Yeah. Two and a half hours, something like that. <sighs> yeah. And I'm sitting there, and we're an hour into the movie, and there hasn't really... There's been, like, a few action scenes, but, like, nothing that, like, that was in Fury Road. And I'm like, oh, I think I hate this. <laughs> the guy Not- the guy just gets up and walks out of Fury Road <laughs> after an hour. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like... There's no action in I this. was like, this is interesting, stuff like that, but, like, this is not the movie, like, that I that I wanted. Yeah, mm. And I'm like, I'm sitting there, and like, I'm like, oh yeah, like it's interesting, like you, have, you know, it's the backstory of Furiosa. It's like fucking hate about prequels. I know where this is going. Yeah. I know what this is all about. And then, you, then, then the rig is made, and there is an action scene, and sweet Jesus, does this film fucking deliver mm. from that point on? Oh my God. I genuinely think there is action scenes in this that are better than in Fury Road. That's, I prefer Fury Road. That's, that's a, I think Fury Road is much better. It's a big claim. But there are some action scenes in this film that are like there's a there's a there's a shot of uh, them fucking bombing it in this like in this big like kind of like monster truck kind of. Uh, it's not well, actually there's a monster truck chasing, so that's a bad description. But mm. there's like they're in a big truck and they're absolutely bombing it. And the 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 camera like it, they're coming up to the camera and the camera pans around and then they drive past and then the camera floats into the air and follows them. It's all like one take or like it seems to be like one take. And then the monster truck appears and then they they switch sides and so we're following the monster truck and then the monster truck does this fucking insane jump over this chasm and it's all it's all tracking it and following it. I'm like, how the fuck did you shoot that? How did you do that? <laughs> um, oh, some of the action scenes are like. Like, what you got in Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is what I wanted. Plus, now you have the benefit of, like, plot. And you have the benefit of, like, having a villain that you absolutely detest. Not because of his visuals. I think with, like, Morton Joe. Well, he was... He was... Dealing, p- dealing everyone, so... Yeah, he was doing some pretty bad <laughs> shit. But, like, in this stuff, like, he, like, he is... Like, Chris Hemsworth is... Uh, harming characters that you have gotten to yeah, like yeah, yeah. in this film. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, well, yeah, so Morton Joe is kind of like, Mad Max is just kind of there. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to be part of any of this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> he just doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Oh, you're part of a brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like, it is, like, an insane movie. It's, like, mm. a, and it's such a good revenge film. Um, there's a bit at the end where there's, like, a super long monologue and then something happens and it is like so deflating. I was like, oh no. Oh no, that's not like, not like, oh no, you fucked up the ending. But like, oh, right. Okay, it's a sad on. ending. No, it's not even a sad ending. It's just like, it's like, the, uh, like revenge is enacted. Mm. And you're like, oh, that's kind of, eh. But then, then it's like, oh no, that's not what happened. This is the story I'm telling you. Some people said that happened. Others say this happened. And then some people know that this is what happened. Because the whole thing is that it is basically like the history man telling you the story and tale mm. of Furiosa. So he's able to... So like even... Follow, like 
So none of it's real? No, no, it is what? real. Like the ending, the ending, like is this, this like, movie isn't real? The ending is this is this is what what happened, mm. and now you're now gonna follow her into the start of Fury Road. Oh, okay. so that's like how it ends up. Ah, at the start of it was Charlie's Theron coming into this, is she? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just like using the same footage of oh. Fury Road. Uh, Anna Taylor Joy is really good in this movie. Yep. Like she doesn't really talk that much because it's you know Fury Rosa, Don't but like she's really good. Um, the child actors in this movie. Really fucking good. That girl can, that girl can cry. That girl can scream at the, at the idea of her mother being brutally tortured and murdered. <laughs> Jesus. Um, um. Jesus. And then like, the other things that I think we kind of shot on a little bit was the CGI. Is it bad? There is some dodgy CGI in this movie. There is some bad CGI in, in this what movie. what sense? Just shots that look really fake. Like, but like look it, really weird. Is that not... Mad Max Fury Road is the exact same, where it all looks so artificial. But then, like, say you compare it... like the, Remember the first trailer that came out from Mad Max Fury Road 2014? Mm-hmm. Really cool trailer. But all all the, the, the color tone is so... It's like sepia, nearly. It's very grey. It's, it's very similar to every other action movie that comes mm-hmm. out these days. And then... But, like, the, the CGI looked fucking amazing. Everything looked great. Um... And but then when it comes out, it's like it's blown up in like this colorful, like technicolor thing. And I didn't like it at first, and it does make everything look a lot worse CGI wise. But that's part of the movie. Like that's nearly like the movie is just out there. Oh no, no, there's like this is just bad CGI. <laughs> there's some shots in this where like that's just bad CGI. Okay, okay. There, like Fair there's enough. a bit where like a woman's like running down into like a tunnel, mm. and like the rocks. Look, you can see the rocks as no, before they fall. The, or no, something. the rocks look real, and then the background, I'm not joking, looks like you know those things in like Looney Tunes that they paint yeah. uh, like yeah, a tunnel? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. fucking looks like that. It yeah. looks so bad. Um and then there's another one of like this little boy who's like crawls out from the truck and he's like, What do I do it now? And like just it was in the trailer. I thought like that shot looked weird in the trailer. I was like, ah, I'm sure it looked you know better. Clean it up, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. It still looks weird. The background just looks like just off entirely it just looks the the shot just looks really flat yeah um but then there's like insane practical effects that completely make up for it Mm -hmm. um there's like a long take of a car just getting its fucking shit wrecked like oh no you really did crash you really crashed that car yeah yeah i wonder how much of the budget for those films is cars or things like that i have no idea remember the remember the big crash in fury road where they're all, they all pile up. Yes. And, uh, like, that was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, how much money does that cost? Uh, pretty not a lot. Cars. Probably not. I don't pretty know. not that much. But just, it's pretty cool. Such a cool thing to do for a job. Yeah. Just crash cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just watch, <laughs> watch Fall Guy, bro. That's, a, that's what that film's all about. It's about crashing cars. It's about uh, surviving. <laughs> yeah, but, like, Fury Road's cooler. Fury Road is cooler. I read that, um, Liam, ha- is it Liam Hemsworth? It's Chris, Chris. Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. They had prosthetic nose on him, um, so that he looked more like Mel Gibson, because, <laughs> for, <laughs> as a kind of a, a point to say, that Mad Max could have just gone in a different direction, where he's like, if he's or like, Mel Gibson could have gone in a different. Direction. Well, he did go in a different <laughs> direction. That's why he didn't go back as Mad Max. <laughs> but uh, I was also reading about like Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson was offered to come back as. They asked him to come back for Fury Road. And he said no. He just wasn't arsed. Like they they tried to make it. They they tried. They started production for Fury Road in 1999. Um, they had everything written. They actually started with Furiosa. Furiosa was the first part of uh, like they f- did the first three. They did Mad Max, uh, Road Warrior, uh, Journey to fucking Thunderdome, whatever it's called. What Ro- is it? Uh, Thunderdome. It's something. That's Road Warrior. I think it's called. It's Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Yeah, yeah. They did the three of them, and then th- uh, they both said Miller and um. What's his fucking name? Mel, uh, Mel, Gibson. Mel Gibson said, yeah, forget about it. We're done with Mad Max. Then 10 years later, Miller was like, he started writing Furiosa with McCarthy. I can't remember his, his, his first name, but the guy who wrote Fury Road as well. And they, they wrote Furiosa first, like kind of the outline of it. And then they're like, it's, you know, let's kind of try to tie this into Mad Max. And that's when they, they, like Fury Road is a sequel nearly. So Fury Road is actually written second. Oh, really? That's yeah, cool. the outline of this film, like it's not the same film, obviously, but the outline is written first, like in the 90s or mm. like in the early 2000s. And when they went to first try to make Fury Road, they had uh, Gibson attached and uh, Miller was going to direct it. And I was reading about it and I said, but 9-11 got in the way and like the war in Iraq and stuff 
because they would have filmed in Iraq okay. or something. I don't know. The Middle East. Basically, the Middle East was too unstable, so they didn't. See, what about Australia? See, 9 11 did have some good things a part of it. <laughs> what about Australia? <laughs> we didn't get the Mel Gibson 2000s fucking Fury, Fury Road. Road. Yeah, that would have been, been, been dog, dog shit. Would have been, been dog. You know? Um, that would have been a very different movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but I just read, I don't know if it was a fan theory or if it was if it was falling out of that interview or that mm. kind of lore or whatever, but that they, they added this prosthetic to, to Hemsworth's snows to kind of, it's like, this is like Mad Max and just like a, something if he just takes a slightly different path yeah because he's just such a disinterested passenger of a character that is like that's kind of the thing about all the all this like the this movie as well is like like you know you have the bit of the hammers like oh you and me were like so similar you know we could have been the same mm. but like it like really does be like you no know, like you could have been like virus could yeah. have easily been like anyone else in this movie you just didn't happen it just didn't happen but it could have easily have happened. And everyone in this movie is just, like, just fucked from, like, the situation that they're in. There's, like, nihilistic, nihilistic apocalypse that they're in. But it's a good action movie. Yeah, I'm going to go see it now. Yeah, I'm no. going to go see it, yeah. I was, like... and I'm When did you see it? The Sunday? Where did, where did you see it, actually? I saw it. Oh, man, I got Sunday, it. like, Sunday, last Sunday, before... Last, before Bank Holly. Yeah, I saw Planet of the Apes in um, yeah, Cineworld that day. That evening. You so. said on IMC? No, Cineworld's not IMC. Cineworld, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, was thinking uh, I saw it in the Galactic screen in uh, IMC Sanji. Ah. You know what? Decent screen. I have a story, though. Oh. Have a story. Never good when you come out of a, ca- come out of a cinema. Oh, no. We're going into the cinema. With, with we're going, going into a cinema. We're going into the cinema. Okay. okay. We arrive up. We booked our tickets online because, like, okay, this might get... This could be busy. Mm. Um, And we arrive in... And there is two double decker buses of teenage boys piling into the cinema. And we are 15 minutes before the start of this movie. I was like, it's fucking over. It's over. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be fucking awful. Yeah, yeah. And we're walking in, and there's a huge queue of them. I'm like, well, I was looking forward to this movie. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm like, okay, right. We'll go. We'll just get our seats first, and then after I'll wait for this queue to die down, and then I'll go and get some popcorn and drinks. And we're walking in, and the ticket usher is there, and she is screaming at these fellas. Screen two, use are in screen two. I'm like, oh, we're in screen one. <laughs> we're in screen one. Let's fucking go. And we're walking in towards screen one. I'm like, <laughs> let me see what these what they're going off to see. And I glance over. They're going off to go see Garfield. 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 What, what age are these guys? These guys were like fucking 13 to like 18. 18? There were some old dudes there. Whoa. whoa, whoa that's strange. And yeah. they were being brought to... I think they were like a school. A school on Sunday? Yeah, but they were English. They are English. So strange. Yeah. Maybe they were like 17, but regardless, they were been, not, they were not actually, seeing Mad Max Fury Road. That is a worse nightmare situation. You're trapped in a cinema watching a movie you want to see with 50 English kids. Oh, man. No. You know? No, and, and no, know, no. But you know what the sad thing was? Mm. Went into gal- the galactic screen. There was fucking nobody there. No one, no one is seeing this film. This film is bombing apparently. Is and it? <laughs> yeah, it's it had like one of the worst Memorial Day like weekend releases in history. What? Yeah, this movie is not doing that good. Um, and it's a shame. I think those trailers did not help. But like this movie. <sighs> This movie Ooh. is do this movie is worth your time. It's not doing terribly. It's not doing great though. It's not doing great though, yeah. Actually it is doing pretty terribly. Yeah. It's not gonna make it it's not gonna break even. That's sad. It is sad. That it is sad. I I'll, I'll definitely go see it. I, I would have thought this would do well. I think those trailers I think everyone had the same reaction that we had. It was like mm. Yeah, it's kinda like uh you know, but then you see him like, oh, fuck me. I, I never should have doubted you, George. I'm sorry. <laughs> George, I have to stop doubting you. He keeps doing it. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, last one made, last one made 380 mil. This one's made 117 in two weeks. It's pretty good. No, you kind of have to make everything the first month. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Are they going to make a sequel early? I don't think, I don't think George Miller is going to be alive to make another one. He is so old. I don't know how he made this movie. Is he? He's like 100. No, he's not that old. But he's, like, he's old. He's 79. Oh, he's not that old. 
<laughs> that was way older. I thought he was like in his nearly 90. Yeah, he's pretty old though. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That's where Skeezy's still making movies. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so, yeah, they said that the, any sequels are kind of subject to the reception of Furiosa. Uh, the next one will be Wasteland, which is will be a prequel focusing on Max. I kind of I kind of want to see that. I was like, yeah, I'm already that excited, but this fucking prequel to this movie was banging, so I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That sounds, that's, that sounds really cool. What a shame. We'll never see it. What a what a what a terrible end to yeah. such a glorious franchise. We never should have doubted him. We never should. Uh, you know. <sighs> Will we go for a break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about <laughs> director, <laughs> you love when I do that. You love when I just hit record just straight into it. <laughs> hit record, just get back on track. <laughs> you got a map day on advance. I know. So you just you're so so self assured about it. Like so you're very good at it. I know what to say. Speaking about <laughs> directorial careers that are coming to an end, Mark, you saw Civil War. Alex Garland, this guy did Ex Machina. He did Sunshine. He no, did. he didn't. He did. No, he didn't. He did. No, he didn't. Oh, well, he wrote it. <laughs> yeah, he wrote it. Danny Boyle. Yeah, he wrote it. Danny Boyle. Yeah, he wrote it. Didn't he write it? <laughs> I don't know. I've obviously <laughs> whatever. Yeah, sure. Danny, I know that Danny Boyle directed that. I think, I think he wrote it. <laughs> but, um, see, Mark, you gotta see it with more confidence. You gotta fucking you gotta lay what you're gonna say. <laughs> he wrote. He wrote and directed many, many things. The Beach, which I haven't seen. That's another Danny Boyle film. <laughs> no, it's not. It's an Alice Garland movie. <laughs> These are all Alex Garland movies. 28 Days Later. 28 Days. That's out. Re- Slumdog Millionaire. It was written by Alex Garland. He was a, right, he was a partner with Danny Boyle. <laughs> no, I know, but this is the fucking this is, Slumdog Millionaire. This, yeah, well, he wrote that. He wrote the book. Um, <laughs> but Alex Garland, he directed Civil War, which came out this year. Civil War. Um, he directed loads of other stuff, which I can't really remember. Um, recently. Shit, Mark, you are right. He did write Sunshine. And he did write 28 Days Later. Yeah, I told you. He didn't do the beach though. He did dread. Dread. Yeah, he did dread. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, sorry, he wrote the novel to the beach. I he's not going on the letterbox, so I don't know. I'm sure. Yeah, it's not. Not everything's about movies. He wrote the book. He wrote the book. He wrote the book. <laughs> he wrote the book. <laughs> he wrote the book. But he was like on a. <laughs> he was. He was kind of. Uh, he was the. Uh, you know. He was the flavor of the moment for about five, six years. And he still is. Good director and all. Yeah, expect that. Did you ever see Men? Yeah, he did Men. I'd never seen Men. No, though. I've never seen Men. I'd never heard anything good about Men either. Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, I just it's kind of heard ambivalent things and then I'd hear like idiots being like, this is racist against men or whatever. <laughs> and so I just didn't watch it. Oh, the only thing I heard was maybe Alex Garland shouldn't have made this movie. Maybe it should have been made by someone else. Oh. That's what I heard. Yeah, so I, I didn't... Yeah. It's pretty pretty right. He was like he's like an A twenty four director, good director, good writer. Uh, but yeah, Civil War came out just there a few months ago, two months ago. Stars Kirsten Dunst, and oh my god, there's a f- there's loads of people in this that Jesse are like Plemons bar- in it? he's in it for literally like twenty minutes. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's barely in it. Um, there's loads of people in it that are famous, which I'm gonna forget. Um, fucking hell, Wagner Mora, you know him if you saw him. Okay. Um, and this guy from Dune and loads of other stuff. Oh, Ste- I love that dude, Stephen Stephen McKinley Henderson. He's great. He's a yeah. great actor. Great guy. He's the big guy, the big like general dude. Yeah, general guy. For, well, he like his eyes roll back in Dune one. Yeah, he's that guy. He's in this movie, and there's a girl as well. There's like a younger girl, and they're a team of journalists, and they're set in a situation where there's a civil war in the United States, and it's set sometime in the near future. And the country has balkanized into four different factions. The two main factions, they don't really talk about like the, uh, the the other factions, but the two main factions are the Western forces and the like the rump uh forces of the, the United States. So like the you know, the, the actual federal government and there's these breakaway forces, the Western forces who are composed of uh, Texas and California. And lots of random kind of places that don't really make any sense to be allied I mean, together. Texas and California makes absolutely no fucking sense. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it is. It's <laughs> it's literally just Texas and California. And um, they're kind of closing in. So it's like the latter stages of this war. 
And these journalists, they're in the war zone and they want to get the best story possible. So they're following the convoy, basically. They're following following the war, following the violence. They're following the convoy on its way to DC. Um, and obviously it's like a lawless kind of, you know, um, anarchic hellhole. Like every, it, it, there's a war going on. Things are kind of in disarray. It's, it's not clear who's in charge at any given point. Um, you know, like they'd be driving through a random town or village and just something weird will happen. They'll have to like get out of Dodge. Um, and yeah, so the whole thing is they want to get to DC in time to basically get an interview with the president who is played by uh, Nick Offerman. So the guy who did the, yeah. you know, yeah, everyone knows him, Nick Offerman. He's that guy, he's in Parks and Rec. He was Ron Swanson. And then he was in that, um, what you call it? The zombie TV series. What was it called? Last of Us. Last of Us, yeah. He was in the, he was in the good episode of that. Um, <laughs> good episode. Oh, he's in one, one, of the, one of the better episodes. <laughs> he's in the best episode, yeah. And he's the president, and he's like delivers like this rousing speech at the start where he's like, oh, he's like calling out the Western Force, and he's like, please surrender. But, you know, he's not in this position where he can ask him to surrender because like, he's getting like crowded in. He's going to get destroyed in a, in a few minutes. And the journalists are trying to get there, get to DC in time to basically cover this and to get the story. Um, and the film is like well put together. And, you know, technically, it's like an A24 film, technically, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's all, everything's fine about the film. But it's just, it's just like just to cut to the chase, it's just, there's just nothing, there's nothing happening here. There's just nothing happening. Yeah, I heard. There's just really like, you know, it's, it's about these journalists and all the acting is great as well. Uh, the story's all right. It's not really particularly tense. It's like a it's like a post apocalyptic thriller, or it's not post apocalyptic. It's like a dystopian thriller. Mm. Um, but it's never really particularly tense at any moment. Uh, for example, you know in the trailer when they meet Jesse Plemons' character, so he is a member of the Western forces, which they end up just kind of running up against by accident. There's mm-hmm. this, there's this really silly scene. Where they're driving, they're driving down like a winding country road, and this other car starts following, them, speeding up alongside them, and they're like, "Oh shit, what the hell is happening here?" Like, this is kind of because you know it's isolated. There's no one else around. There's no laws, basically. There's no police here. And you're like, what's going to happen? The guy rolls down his window, and it turns out it's like Wagner Mora's character, like the main guy character. It's his friend from like a year ago, and he's like, "Hey man," he's like this crazy journalist guy, and like he decides to get like to. He decides to swap over with his buddy who's in like the car that's ch- that was chasing them. He swaps over from the driving seat into the passenger seat, climbs out of the car and like jumps into their car. Okay. It's just a weird scene. So then the the young girl that's with the journalists, she decides to go in the opposite direction and to get into like the stranger car. Okay. Like the car that's chasing them. So what 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 the fuck is happening here? What, what why is she doing that? What's happening? Okay. What is this? It sounds confusing. So, so yeah, this is it's just, I was just like, what, what? What's the point of the scene? Basically, she, he drives off, and they can't find him, and they're like, oh shit, like you know, what's he doing? Um, oh yeah, I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I, like it's just it's weird. But basically, he, he he didn't do anything bad. He just got he got caught by this random kind of rogue soldier who's played by Jesse Plemons, who is it's probably terrifying. He was part yeah, he's part of the Western forces. And he's just kind of like... What kind of American are you? Yeah, yeah. Like, see, that's a great line from the trailer. That's, like, really cool. Um, it's like, it makes you... It's like, it makes you think, when you haven't seen the film or you're thinking about what this film could be, you're like, what kind of American are you? Like, that's that's an interesting question to have in the story. It's like, wh- wh- what does he mean by that? Yeah. You know? Is he, you know, is he, you know, is it... Wh- what's his idea of an American? Like, a white American? Or, like, you know... Is that uh, ideology? Is yeah, it? like a conservative American, Republican American, you know, monarchist American, whatever, you know. Um, but in the film, it's it's not. It's like he's like, what geographical are you in South American or North American? Mm. That that's it. That's not interesting at all. No, that's, that's way, not. That's yeah, that's just so so lame. Like, like that's yeah. that's such an obvious thing. I don't know. That's such an obvious thing to. It, it's a cool line. It is a cool line. And even <laughs> the guy who made the trailer is like, this is this should have been done like this. So yeah. I'm gonna make it sound like. That's like what that. it is. Yeah. Yeah. But he's just, he's literally asking, like, where are you from in America? Like, are you South American? Are you North American? Yeah. Are you, are you on our side or not? But, like, it's not even like, are you on our side or not? Are you from? It's like, where are you from? Are you from Texas or California or not? <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. It's like, are you from, um, you know, Texas, California? Are you from Florida? One guy's like, he's like, I'm from, I'm from Florida, man. And he's like, it's okay. 
you're American. And then there's one guy, he's like Asian. And he's like, are, what, are you American? He's like, no, I'm like Chinese or something. And he shoots him. I was like, it's like, just like, just, there's a missed opportunity there. Yeah. Where they could have gone with something else. Um, but yeah, and then they get to the, they get to DC. Basically, they survive that whole thing. He's only in for 20 minutes. And that scene isn't, it is kind of disturbing. Because it's like, you have like uh, an image of like a, a mass grave and stuff. But they get to DC and there's, it's the, the whole film is kind of about, um, like you kind of think it's about journalists and, you know, the kind of the holding up journalists as this, as a war journalist, especially as, like, you know, this kind of like higher class of people. It's like, how are they doing this? Like, these are all, these people are all heroes and stuff. But like... A beacon of hope. A beacon truth. of hope. But it's not real. The film is very cynical about that, I think. I don't think it is actually saying that these people are all heroes. Apparently, that is not what he was trying to do, though. It's not, is it? Apparently, he was trying to make a film where, like, yeah, journalists are heroes. Really? Yeah. How? He came up and he said that. Why? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. He, 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 well, this film is just completely, doesn't make any, like, I don't know. This film is just, it's even more boring than I thought it was then. Yeah. Because. Because what I heard, because I saw a TikTok about it, talking about, it was like a quote from Alex Garland being like, I tried to make an apolitical film in terms of um, looking at journalism as being a beacon of hope. But then the, the TikToker was like, that's not the movie that you made, though. The movie yeah. that you made is about, like, how journalists can be, like, swayed into different yeah ideologies. Yeah. Like, they're just... Like, the film isn't... I, I, I think the film also is, like, a victim of a circumstances where this was clearly... This was, you know... They started making this two years ago. Yeah. They would have produced it, you know. Yeah. They would have shot everything last summer. It's like, now people people see what war journalism is... War journal- journalism is... And it's not what's in this film at all. Like yeah, real like, war journalism. Yeah, we are seeing that daily. Yeah, now. everyone sees it on their feed every single day. And then in this film, it's like, oh, they got a duck and dive under. There's, it's like there's a scary guy over there. We better watch out for him. Um, do you see that bullet? Or it's just shooting off in the distance. Should we go investigate or not? Let's just stay here in our safe little cave. Um, or like they have like a little encampment under an overpass. With like, mm. They have like electricity and all. Everything's fine. They're like, let's just leave that. Whatever's going on over over there, we'll check in the morning. Um, and they're 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 chasing the violence, but they're also working with they're wor- they're they're very openly working with the Western forces. Yeah. And um, they're working for the good guys. They're working for the good guys, but not not like in a direct sense. Like obviously, they have a conflict with Jesse Plemons, yeah. who's part of that that uh, faction. But even the fact that the the idea that there is a good guy. Yeah, yeah. It's like completely and un- like that's antis- an- the antithesis mm. of like what like journalism should be. Yeah, because but especially in this scenario where the film doesn't say that there's any good people really, mm. so surely the ju- if the journalists are the heroes, why are they so like kind of openly collaborating with one side, where to the extent where I I, I don't want to spoil. Should I spoil it? You can spoil. Yeah. There's this, there, at the end of the movie, they're in the White House. They're in the bunker under the White House. For some reason, no one has moved from the White House. <laughs> that's like, you know, that, that still controls it. The president is still in there. And the, the journalists are you know, in lockstep with the Western forces as they clear each corridor. It's like, well, but they're going after the shot. They're going after the story. Well, what's heroic about that? So, like, you're, you're, you're part of the winning team where it's not really clear if they're the, you know, obviously it's implied they're the good guys and this guy is like Trump, a Trump kind of figure. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, there's like no detail whatsoever. So like you're you're just there kind of documenting uh, like executions and stuff. Um, and there's a point where Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst, her character asks, um, or I think it's the young girl asks um, Kirsten Dunst if she would photograph um, her death or her execution. Because there's a scene where someone dies and they photograph the entire thing, um, and Kirsten Dunn's character is like, "Yeah, of course, I have to get this. Like, that's that's the story. That's that's reality." Um, and I thought kind of the point of the film was that these people are chasing. They're night crawlers. Yeah, chasing <laughs> sensa- yeah chasing sensational images or violent imagery for this nearly the sake of it, the same way these factions are chasing violence for no particular reason. Mm-hmm. Like, like a reason that isn't clear in the story anyway. Uh, so I thought that was a, some kind of like a very very subtle critique that was in there. But apparently 
apparently he that's just, that's not there at all. That's not what he's going for. Yeah. yeah. Cause it, it just it came at it's such a bad time because it just doesn't make any sense to think that the, the characters depicted in this film are heroic in like any way. Yeah. It doesn't make them look good at all. They just like they're very serious, like Dunst is very serious about what she does and like you know, you can see it's kind of they're they're going through a rough time. But it's kind of more like it's similar to the road nearly, where they're like always kind of in danger like that and you and you can feel that there's there's danger out there beyond the horizon. But the characters are choosing to put themselves in that danger every single moment. Mm-hmm. And that's they're deliberately saying, like, we're choosing to do this and they're putting them themselves in those situation in those situations. So you're like like there's nothing like you you're creating your own problem. Like, it's mm. not really it's just a bit of a nothing. I am um, I think as well, like I don't really have that much interest in this film because when I saw that first trailer, I was like, Oh I feel like this film should have came out like five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this mm-hmm. film should have came out like pre in the, like, in the middle of Trump, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. I watched it and I was like, oh, I know what this film's going to be about. Like, it's going to be the, this political tension in America, which I think it's really funny that, like, that is... I haven't seen, like, loads of films do that, but I've seen too many, like, SNL sketches and, like, just, like, TikToks and, like, YouTube videos and just, like, all that type of shit that I was like, it's... Even if you were to do it really well, I think it's already tired and no one... It's just like, yeah, you're pointing at the obvious. Like the idea of... America is divided. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just that. Uh That idea is just, like, uh, it's so played out Uh at this stage. Yeah. Like, you look at the Halloween Kills and stuff. It's weird that Halloween Kills has come up twice, but... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Look at, like, Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills is the one that I... Retrospective is in the... Yeah, maybe maybe, (laughs) maybe Halloween Kills didn't, wasn't shit. Um... (laughs) No, I've been watching some of Nick Sphere's videos again. I was watching, oh, her, right. yeah. was watching her video on Halloween Kills. Um, but, like, you just look at that film, and that film was about was about Trump and, like, mm. people and stuff like that. And you're just like, it was so tired. Even, like, as she was saying, like, it was so tired even when it came out. It was, like, so on the nose mm. that, like, when I see anything that's like that now, I'm like, it's just, like, I was like, I'm not interested. It doesn't go anywhere. It ages like milk as well. Yeah. Like... Like he was gonna watch this. I like. I don't know. I like. I I've seen it anyway, and I don't think I've ever, ever watched it again. I don't know why someone would watch it in say ten years, because it's by the this by the time, the time between this film wrapping up production and it being released, it was already out of date. Yeah. Like literally by the time it was out in cinemas, it was out of date. Like it's just, it's 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 a Halloween Kills kind of thing, kind of syndrome, where it's just the the, the topics it's trying to deal with are just way way beyond like its understanding it seems like anyway mm. it's, it, 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 at least it doesn't want to grapple with them in, any kind, in, in an interesting way yeah uh, which is kind of a shame because he is a good director he's a good writer and all the actors are very good and it could have had potential but it's just it's just so boring yeah. and then it's just it is kind of sickening like all that stuff like every like you know remember there was a time in like around 2010 where like every second film was like journalists like clapping each other on the back yeah like we're so fucking good spotlight we, yeah spot, spotlight uh, was it what the post um, yeah remember the post there was a few others about like uh, like spotlight's what, good as well but like yeah yeah just, but just stuff like that <clears throat> the importance of journalism yeah yeah like we're, you know we're very serious without <laughs> us society will collapse the fifth estate and all that stuff yeah. the, fifth the estate, watchdogs yeah yeah we're, yeah we're like we're the guardians of society, right. and it's like, well, you're not doing a very, very good job. Yeah, right? yeah, no, you're, yeah. You're clearly apparently everything is falling apart. How are you? You're not very good at guarding anything, then, Espe- are you? Like, especially nowadays. Yeah. Like, especially when you look at, like, uh, like American journalism is like mm. the whole thing in America oh. is CNN versus Fox. I don't really think that you can be like, ah, yes, yeah, the noble integrity of the journalist. Yeah, yeah, fucking Anderson Cooper is defending democracy. It's like, they're both full of shit. Yeah. Everyone, and everybody knows that. Like, the only people who actually believe what these films say are the people who make them and the people who write them. Are the, the, the like, liberal... The liberal elites. The liber- no, I've been no, talking about it's it. Just like, it's just, true, though. It's just the fucking... Yeah. It's just the libs. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but dude, this, it's just made for them. Um, and no one else... No, like, no one else in the world. Like, we're yeah. far removed from it. Think about everyone else in the world. 
like no one else gives a fuck. They're yeah. like, this is ridiculous. This yeah. looks this like this self importance just looks so ridiculous to anybody like looking in from the outside or anyone who has like any kind of self awareness yeah. at all. It's just it's kind of uh, it's kind of disgusting. It's kind of disgusts me. Yeah. You know, it is just so it arrogant. Is, yeah. It is a se- like that self American importance. Yeah, yeah. It's a very yeah. particular brand of it. I need more films to take the piss out of America. I need more. Yes. I need more satire films, Mark. Yes. Oh, yes. I need films oh. like our recommended film for this episode, oh. Walker, 1987, directed by Alex Cox, brother of Brian. Making Alex that joke Cox. again. <laughs> the same age, yeah. More or less. Um, so, Walker, 1987. During the 1850s, American lawyer and journalist William Walker, along with his battalion of mercenaries, invades... Nicaragua and becomes the nation's self-proclaimed president. Mm. Mm -hmm. Really? That sounds that doesn't sound realistic to me. No. That sounds very unrealistic. Okay. So this movie starts and it says This is a true story. And I had heard you had told me that this film was like mixed message like mixed reviews at the start. Mm. And straight away my brain turned on. I was like this is a true story. It's not saying this is based on a true story. <laughs> this is saying this is a true story. I was yeah. like, what? I was like, what the fuck? I was like, how could this film claim that? Um, and then I was sitting there and I was like, this is so, like, do you have the opening scene of, like, um, you have, uh, William Walker in, like, Mexico and there's, like, a, a failed kind of offense going on. They have to, they have to retreat. And then you have him back in America on trial for breaking the um, neutrality act. The neutrality act, and the way he's able to get out of it is by being like, "Listen, we're Americans. Manifest destiny. It is our God-given right to go to different countries and lay down civilization and democracy to them because they're too savage to get it themselves." And I'm sitting there like. This is a true story. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Man. oh, hold on a second. Hold on. And then the next scene plays. And the next scene is a bunch of men standing around with this deaf woman talking about the importance of Southern institutions being brought about. And one of them's like, you mean slavery? And he's like, I'm talking about slavery. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and the deaf woman's opposed to this. And yeah. like, Winnie Walker's like kind of, you know, not really the same what she's saying. And the guy's just like, no, no, no. This is the importance of being American. And it was at the, it was at the, the I'm not joking. It was at this moment that I realized what was going on. Because they're, they're in this lavish, richly decorated room. And they're there talking about the importance of democracy, the importance of civilization, the importance of American culture and its institutions being spread across the world. All the while, in the background, this child is really badly playing this violin. Mm. And it's like distracting how bad it is. And it's like this idea of like American culture is not what it sees itself as. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I see what we're going. I see what's going on here. Yeah, then, yeah. It's very cl- yeah, and there's like your one playing the she's playing like back on like like out of key on the yeah. piano, um. It's like moonlight. It's like a really ominous moonlight sonata or something. A very ominous kind of. And they're playing it so fucking. Yeah, badly. yeah, yeah. It's it's the film is so smart, very very t- intelligent, um. But yeah, it's like this is a true story, and you're like, no, it's not. And then you're like, oh wait, yeah, it is. Yeah. So you look it up, you're like, what? How is this? <laughs> how did this happen? Like, how? This dude is rocked up and just took over a country. This guy just invaded Mexico, and they're like, here, you can't do that. And he was like, I'm American, goddammit. And the, the jury were like, he's hey, fucking bang on. He is American. He's innocent. And then he invaded Nicaragua. I was just, what? Like, what happened there? But yeah, it's a story of William Walker, who was a filibuster, which back in the day meant someone who like would just go off and, like, st- you know, start shit with random just people. Start <laughs> coos, <laughs> just coos everywhere. <laughs> you could just go off and like, um, it was kind of an insp- expansionist agenda for like the southern, the southern states in the 1850s. So it was pre-war, but there was a huge, like there was such a huge prelude to the civil war, 
it went on for like a decade plus, like the border wars and the Kansas Missouri wars, and every like back then the United States only extended about as far as about as far as Texas, because I think Texas only joined the states in like the forties, late forties, something like that. Yeah, it's around the time of Blood Meridian when that happened. Mm-hmm. That actually also a true story, uh, but like it, it only extended about halfway through the the the, the continent. Um, so like every new state, they needed new states because the whole manifest destiny thing. But there's a huge contest between the abolitionists who weren't as strong at that point, and then like the you know the old kind of gentry slave holding class, um, who wanted every new state to be a, sl- a slave holding state. So uh, uh, like ironically, if they had won, um, America would be mostly um, Latin, like Latin American. Because mm-hmm. they wanted, they wanted Cuba, they wanted Mexico, they wanted all of C- Central America, and um, they wanted Colombia as well. They wanted like everything. There was like, like these guys, they but they didn't want the like the the parts that had been already been like settled by like whites and like British mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because they, you know, they would be generally, they'd have no economic interests in slaves because there weren't really any non-white people there. So th- these, you know, these white supremacists didn't want the white people. They wanted to go out and just like. Uh, conquer and like subjugate everyone to the south of them and it was just like this insane idea and for years you had people like this guy William Walker who would just go out and start shit and try to invade people like just out of nowhere and it, like it just happened like, backed th- by, these things just backed, happened backed by companies not even the states yeah yeah exactly yeah like he went into Mexico went to went into uh, Calif- he went into Baja California like the little piece sticking out at the end of it and took it over for the most part like he actually took it over he had a flag and all and like he got recognition from like some towns in, in California, like in the uh, upper Cal- California as well. And he also claimed Sonora, which is like, you know, has like fucking 30 million people these days. Like he, like, and the, the Mexicans were like, eventually, I think after a few months, they're like, what the fuck what are you? The like, you can't be doing this. The and they complained to the US and he was there like, oh yeah, fair enough. <coughs> Took him back and they put him on trial for violating the Neutrality Act. Um, and he got away with it because he was, uh, you know, the whole Manifest Destiny thing. But then yeah, they, they shipped him out to Nicaragua um, to overthrow, I know the 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 Nicaraguans actually reached out to him. The Democratic Party reached out to him to help overthrow the I think the monarchists. Something like that. Yeah, and he went down there and he basically just he was like, his coup was successful. It was only a few hundred people or like maybe a hundred militiamen. The immortals. Yeah, yeah, and he went down there and he overthrew the government and he overthrew them and he was like, mm, I might just I might just take this for myself. I kind of like this place. He just, <laughs> and he just didn't, he didn't pass power over to anybody, and the Americans recognized him as the rightful leader of Nicaragua, which is just, and basically all of Central America. It's one of the foundational nationalist kind of, um, uh, kind of myths, or it's not a myth; like it's a real thing that happens. It's like a, the same way Easter Rising is like a national myth for Ireland. It's like this in Nicaragua at the one of the national days. I think in Costa Rica and Honduras as well. There's a public holiday every year, I think in April or May, uh, commemorating the time when nearly every single state in Central America formed a coalition just to attack this guy and his government. <laughs> <laughs> Take this just, fucker out. They're like, this guy is just ridiculous. And they just went in. They're like, fuck this. Um, like, he wasn't even really threatening all of them. It was just like the precedent he was setting. And the fact that he'd also pissed off a lot of American businessmen, which, just, which comes up in the movie. Yeah. Like, they were just like, we have to take this guy out. And it's they just like took the him out. It's the fucking goal of this cunt. Like, the, uh, the balls. Yeah. The balls in this guy. And it's all, like, that's this, that's what the movie is. And it's all completely true. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the, the, the movie's, like, so many more, like, kind of surrealist elements. But I think the surrealism isn't, like, it's not something where it's kind of exaggerating or uh, adding things onto the story, it's just kind of accentuating how ridiculous this story is, mm-hmm. and it's not it's not a, a thing where it's like, oh, this is such a kind of a wacky zany movie. It's like the ridiculousness of it, the the the, the surreality of it is like this. The fact that this is real is what's so fucking like disgraceful. Mm-hmm. The fact that this actually happened and the fact it, that it has yeah. it's like there's so many because it's obviously a parallel as well with the eighties. This was filmed in Nicaragua in the eighties during the Contra yeah. War. Dan, that's like, like <clears> it's crazy. Man. Because your... Was your last pick, Battle of Algiers? Yeah. Because when I was watching this, I was like, this is some double bill. Because you look at, like, Battle of Algiers, like, it is so historically accurate to, like, the portrayal of guerrilla warfare. And you're, like, you're watching it, and you're like, man, like, this shit speaks to, like, now. And, Mm. like, how people can view shit going on now. It's just, like, a universal story. 
but then this film, Walker, is this is so surrealist and so absurd. It like is like literally be like no this film is literally saying no this shit is still happening yeah and we are yeah. still doing this um it like because it's be- like what is it 1840s 1850s 1850s yeah and it's like oh yeah we're still doing that in the 1980s we mm. are still at this 130 years later we are still doing what we're doing here it was re- like because the guy who directed battle of algiers Gio pontecorvo his follow-up to battle of algiers is called burn which is about william walker it's the same story exact same story um but it's like it's it's more he he messes with the story a bit more i haven't seen it now but i i, I was meaning to see it i was meaning to, to watch it with this film but um i don't know i couldn't really find it yeah, okay. but anyway yeah it's like because it, so there is like such a parallel there and there, i think it, this this film must work better because like this is directly like in dialogue with a real world parallel which mm-hmm. is happening at that moment like in the vicinity of where they were filming during the Contra War, the film ends with footage from the Contra War, like yeah, bodies being washed, uh, victims of the Contras. Um, the way- in the middle of like you know the U.S. government was arming all these people. They were like they were so involved in it. It's just, just a relevant story to tell at the time. It's just so in your f- like it's not even in your face. It's like it's just like such a. Uh, it's just a. It's a, it's that thing. It was like a surrealism where it just like uncovers. It's like under reality, like it just uncovers something that is just like there, but you're you're not seeing it. Yeah, um, it's the way it does it, because like there's certain scenes. So like to explain like how this film does this, like speaking to the present, is again it is set in 1850s, and then all of a sudden people are reading Time magazine. There's a computer in his in, a com- in his office. There's yeah. a computer in the guy's office. There's a scene where people are in horse car, and then a car drives past them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just a full blown Volvo just drives past them, <laughs> yeah. but like in those moments, what they are talking about, and like the the juxtaposition of them talking about this, like these Americans coming in and taking over their their land, and like overthrowing their governments and killing their people, and then you see a Volvo go by, and you think, oh yeah, it's set in the eight, it's set in the nineteen eighties. Because it's still because ha- it's still happening. Yeah, it is nearly. And like you know? I saw like something saying like this is like as Brian as you said like Brian he went down to Nicaragua to make this film. Mm. This is not an American film. This is a Nicaraguan film. This is a film made like mm. from their perspective. Yeah, on yeah. how America treats them. Yeah, made with American money. I have no idea how this film was fucking made. I do not understand how studios released this movie. Yeah, it is kind of... Like, the the fact that it got made is bewildering. It does make complete sense that this guy was blacklisted after. Oh, 100%. But this is also one of those things where, you know, the way you come across a movie... Uh, the director would be there whining. He's like, oh, I was never really allowed to get on a big project again because they didn't really like my style or clash with the producers. I was too, I had too much creative control. I wanted too much creative control. I was too much of a, yeah, I was, I was a visionary. And you're like, yeah, 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 fair enough. And like this guy is like, yeah, they just, they didn't like my politics and like, you know, the movie. And then you watch the movie, you're like, oh yeah, I, 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 see I can see why. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can completely understand why you're blacklisted. Like for, you know, for good reasons from his, uh, from his perspective, like he's a. Uh, I feel like he doesn't complain. He's like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but it was like it is completely. It's just it is the film is so. I don't know because it's not. There's another way every like you see a film that's like oh, this film is is really speaking to this. This film is a very radical film, but you kind of have to look into it. You know, mm-hmm. kind of have to like read between the lines. Um, you don't and have then to do that reading in this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then there's so much just like it's just like in your face. It's like fuck off with that, you know. Like it's so annoying. This one's like it's it's sur- like surrealism, like at like in a really um, I don't know, just like really, it's really well done. In that, it just it's kind of like it's just drip feeding you like the reality underneath the reality, mm-hmm. like throughout the entire film, just the whole based on a true story. All all these grandstanding speeches where you're like that's bullshit and they're like oh yeah I understand yeah. why this is happening in the movie um, and all these like uh, anachronisms throughout uh, you know the Volvo the computer all these things it just it, it makes so much helicopter at the very fucking yeah, end yeah yeah it, like, it makes so much sense in a, such a nonsensical way because that's what the reality actually is because none of it makes any sense if you're like you know if you're using common sense you're like that that shouldn't have happened but it did happen mm-hmm. um, and it's still happening yeah. But you're like, it shouldn't be happening. 
And the movie is kind of like just an expression of that um, in a dangerous kind of way. At the, at the time, it would have been very, very, very politically sensitive mm-hmm. considering, uh, I don't know when the Contra affair came out. Was that the year, probably the year after, the year after that? Is this 87? Yeah, I think it was it was eighty eight or was it eighty six yeah. or something. I don't know. It's around. It's some, like it's at our, It's two years under or two years after. Yeah, so yeah. In around that time. So yeah, very politically sensitive. The fact he made it and the fact he got it released. The fact that, but like the, the, the cowards who actually didn't, who didn't like this film. I know because it's. Like, you can, I was saying it beforehand to you on like the twenty minutes. Like it, you can kind of tell. You get the sniff test with the yeah. film within 15, 20 minutes. You, you can. You can tell. For the most part, you can tell this film is going to be at least, say, a 6 out of 10. Yeah. Like, this film is going to, it's going to be at least good. And then unless it depends. They, like, unless it's really good and they royally fuck it up in the third act. Unless they completely fuck it up. You know, you're like, I can, I'm can. i pretty sure, like based on how this film is going, the, vibe. the competency of the actors, of the director, of kind of how it's presented, I can be pretty sure this is going to be good. Within 15, 20 minutes, I was like, this film is going to be at least a 6 out of 10. Yeah. It's gone, it goes way but beyond that. It's even that's, better. That's what happened with me because I was like, what? And then I had that scene, like the third scene is like 10 minutes in. I was like, oh, okay, I see what yeah. we're doing. I know, I get, okay, right, right, right. Mm. And then it takes that and just like slowly develops it further and further and further throughout the film to the point where you have uh like again it's eight it's eighteen fifties, a helicopter piling into Nicaragua to be like, <laughs> American citizens, let's get you out yeah, yeah. and then uh, just like piling these people out. Um Yeah. And then there's like complete like like that's even like, you know, the all the all the surrealism aspects of it are like incredible. But then you have the bits where like Ed Harris is so good in this if movie. Ed, ha- it's also another thing. If Ed Harris is in your movie, your movie is almost certainly really good. He's so like I he's think so good. I think that's what like really saves this movie is like how good in this film he is because like it is like it's a satire. It is kind of comedic, but like he is like so stern and so good at this like guy that believes he is sent from God to do this. Mm. He is put on. Go- I think one of the lines he says is something like. Um, if a man doesn't have a sense of purpose to better himself or the people around him, he is not a man at all, or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. And like that—that that is like that is who this this man thinks of himself, mm-hmm. and he goes forth. He is literally walking through battles, no weapons, just go. He's like he's the they have the scene where like they get ambushed, and he just keeps walking. And one of the soldiers who's shot and dying is like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "The only thing I know how to do. I'm advancing." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he, he holds it together so you well. Ju- you just like for him, you keep moving forward because mm. moving forward is to dominate, um, and everyone else is completely expendable. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but like, and he is like a fucking detestable character. Yeah, oh, he's pure evil. Uh, but he was a real guy. Like, he's a real guy. And he was like, a folk hero in the US for decades. Like that that bit where like he's like where they're like, Oh, we're running out of uh, we're running out of arms, we're running out of money, we're out, running out of food, what are we gonna do? And he's like Slavery. Yeah. This is just slavery. <laughs> yeah. The thing at the start yeah. of the movie that he said he was opposed to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was uh Yeah, he re legalized yeah, it had been banned and then he re legalized it. Um Yeah, the guy was just pure evil. Like it's just such an unbelievable, st- but the, and the film it f- it's a funny film as well, but not in like a, a non serious way. Like it mm-hmm. takes itself, it's like it takes itself seriously without being like um like kind of grave about the situation. But it's also like funny without being like slapstick or anything. Yeah, like it's just it's just like this is just such a ridiculous situation. This guy is such a ridiculous character. You have you, like if you if you weren't laughing, you cry because it's just such a tragic disturbing I think kind of turn of events. Yeah, that's how it wor- how the song works is because it is comedic but you're watching something so incredibly fucked up. Mm. So like inherently disturbing and disturbing because it is like the point of this film is the very heart, the very soul of the American Empire mm. is completely corrupt. Yeah, yeah. Foundationally. Yeah. Which is probably why he didn't get another movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> he's only made... He only makes micro-movies now. Uh, less than 200k. Under this year, under the radar, like, out of the jurisdiction of, like, the unions. like the Or, like, the big kind of production studios as well. So he just makes them himself in, like, a small studio that he owns. Um, but, yeah, like, the, 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 the message of the film, it's, it's, it's pretty... For an American film, it's just so out there. 
So out there, because and especially in the eighties, yeah, like you see this in the sixties, like 70s, oh, I yeah. can see that, yeah, seventies. Yeah. Like yeah, we're literally yeah. talking about Planet of the Apes, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, you look at like you know seventies films we talk about. Mm. The eighties is very different. The eighties is fucking Reagan, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. This British, like, socialist just shows up, makes Repo Man for some reason, <laughs> and then he gets allowed to make. The, he makes this movie. He made. He, he's gonna make. He was offered. He made the Running Man as well, didn't he? He was offered the Running Man or this movie. Yeah. And he decided to make Walker instead. I know. I think he did make the Running Man though as well. Did he? I think. I think his last movie he made was oh, the Running was Man. It? Yeah, the Running Man's good as well. Yeah. I like the Running Man. Is that the one where he like goes around blowing people? Oh, it's Demolition Man. No, it's one. Yeah, it's one where Arnie's running around. He just runs everywhere. No, okay, I'm thinking of the, it's the Stallone film Demolition Man. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Film, Running Man's all right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I watched it like two years ago, maybe. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Alex Cox, what a guy. What a guy. I'll have to rewatch Repo Man. Um, maybe I'll get it now. I liked it the first time I watched it, but I was like, I have no idea what's going on in this movie. It is. It's kind of confusing. It's kind of confusing. It's maybe we'll understand Reaganomics. it a bit more now. Yeah, I think it. I remember reading about something to do with Reagan. It's always Reagan. It's always Reagan. It's always a bastard Reagan. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Demented God. <laughs> is that in New York, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. Is that in New York or California? Right. I can't remember. It's a hazy time, man. Yeah, hazy time. Okay, right. My recommended film for episode 138. Okay, so I want to recommend this film. It is a brand new film. Okay. It's a film that, like, literally, I think it came out, like, last week or, the week, or this, this week. Oh, right. It is called In a Violent Nature. In a Violent Nature? I've been meaning to watch that movie. Yeah. Wait, of, what is it about again? It's the enigmatic resurrection, rampage, and retribution of an undead monster in a remote wilderness unleashes an iconic new killer after a locket is removed from a collapsed fire that's a terrible description this is, this is the worst synopsis of all time basically right that's it there basically from what I've understood what I yeah, understand from from the perspective of the killer it's yeah it's yes. a slasher from the yeah. perspective of the killer and I've heard things where it has been compared to Skin and Marink, mm. which is interesting mm. Um, apparently it's like a grotesque violent slasher movie but also incredibly boring because it's from the slasher's perspective. Wait, how are we going to see this? It is on HBO Max, so I feel like there's ways to watch this movie. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. So I'm, that's my that's my recommendation. If we can watch it, mm-hmm. if we can't watch it, my recommendation will be instead. <laughs> we, we got an alternative. Yeah. Recommendation. Just because I don't I don't know if we're going to be able to watch this movie. Uh, we should be able to find a way. I think I feel like we should be able to. But if we can't, um, my recommended film is going to be. I'm throwing it back. I'm throwing it back to a film that I love that you haven't seen. Uh huh. Possession. Possession. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. on. That's on Amazon Prime. So we can definitely watch that. <laughs> I still have your DVD, then, man. I'm gonna watch on that. Bro, I thought I in my head I was like I thought I had a copy of that somewhere and I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> I still have it. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, bro, I'm, I'll, not I'll, jo- I'm gonna watch it. I'll bring it back to you uh, for next episode. Okay, cool. I'm not joking, bro. I was literally like going through my DVDs and stuff like that. I was like, I feel like I had a copy of Possession, but I obviously don't because I don't have it here. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, uh, I still haven't watched it, but I'll, 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 I'll stick it on the the PS3. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, yeah, I'll slot that in. I'll bring it, <laughs> bring it back to you. Next time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That in. So uh, that'll be possession. Possession is the backup. So we're gonna return to a movie that we've already kind of talked about, but not really because I didn't want to go into too much <laughs> detail about it. Or we're gonna talk about this new film. All right. So there we go. Either way, they're both fucked up. Yeah. Either way, they're fucked up. They're gonna make you feel sick. So that's that's an own recommendation <laughs> if I've ever heard one. That's the most <laughs> own recommendation of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Look this one was so fucked up. We might be too trigger, we might trigger warning before the film. Do not watch this movie. Yeah, uh, yeah trigger warning for something. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> Sad feelings coming your way. Oh dear. All right, yeah. we we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Good night. Thank you. Good night. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.